Good evening. Bristol's mayor says he will deliver on his election promise to build a 12,000-seat stadium in the city, even though his bid for a £40 million government grant has been turned down. Councillors say he clearly didn't get the application right. Karen Griggs reports. This is the dream, a 12,000-seat music arena to be built on Wasteland near Templemead's train station. The hope is if Bristol builds it, the big names will come. But there's been a setback. A bid for £40 million of government money has been turned down, yet the city's mayor is far from downbeat. Only one source of funding, and actually it was a bit of a try-on, to be honest. There was a, it was six to one as, against us getting funding because of the number of cities that were and, and other places that were applying. And it's a matter of, you know, finding a mortgage for your house. It's a matter of finding the deposit. It's, it's, it's a usual game, just scaled up a bit. It's really disappointing, and it's, and it's worrying as well, isn't it? Because such a lot was put into that bid. Uh, it was a major bid. It was a big proportion of the pot that was available. So we're concerned that, you know, did the mayor get the right advice? There was also a bid for a further £35 million to refurbish Bristol's Colston Hall. But it's the new arena that could really put the city's musical future on a whole new scale. So there still seems to be a consensus that the arena is still very much wanted and needed here in Bristol. But one big question remains, if and when that funding comes through, who do our politicians want to see there opening night? Do you know what? I would love to go and see Adele. I've seen her shows on the television. I've got the tapes. I'd like to see her. I owe a lot to Massive Attack. I think they are people who have given Bristol a huge lift on the music scene, um, as, along with lots of others. So Bristol will rock, but of course only when the pennies come rolling in. Karen Griggs, ITV News, Bristol. Postal workers in part of Somerset are on strike for a second day after talks with bosses over staffing broke down. Managers have now been drafted in to deliver the post, but the communication workers' union say only half will make it through the letterboxes. Royal Mail say they hope the dispute can be resolved. I think, I think it's ridiculous that you've got um, Royal Mail shipping in managers um, who are only playing at delivering the mail. Um, they're, just, they're just scratching the surface. I mean, if Royal Mail are serious about resolving this and getting customer service back to normal for the people of Bridgewater, then they need to stop this charade and sit round the table and start negotiating properly. A planning application to build one of the largest solar farms in the country has been submitted to Swindon Borough Council. Swindon Commercial Services wants to put 160,000 solar panels on a former airfield at Roughton. They say the 40 megawatt farm would be able to power 12,000 homes. Avon Fire Authority has confirmed a merger of two fire stations in Bristol will go ahead. It's part of proposals to try to save money after the services budget was cut by £11 million. Kingswood Station will be redeveloped while the station at Speedwell now faces closure. Meanwhile, the Chief Constable of Wiltshire Police says the force can't take any more cuts to its budget. It's been slashed by 20% over four years, and now Chief Constable Pat Ginty says if the government orders further reductions, the force may not be able to cope. I would have to look very carefully at the impact that further cuts in the policing budget would make. And if I felt that I could no longer provide safe policing in Wiltshire, I would have to say so both to the public and to the Commissioner. Planning permission has been granted for a £45 million redevelopment of Cheltenham Racecourse. It's the largest ever investment for the site and will pay for new facilities, including a new grandstand and a multi-tiered viewing platform for the parade ring. Work will start next March. Well, this weekend, it's RAF Fairford's International Air Tattoo. Poor weather has blighted the event in recent years, but huge crowds are expected this weekend to see aircraft that have flown in from across the world. Our Gloucestershire correspondent, Ken Goodwin, reports. Reaching for the sky, the Red Arrows display team, just one of the attractions to entertain over 130,000 visitors this weekend. Despite this being an RAF base leased by the Americans, they aren't here this year because of budget cuts. But most of the crowd don't seem to mind. They're just grateful that after several years of washouts, there is no rain and plenty of sun. Every 10 years you have one year like this, so you have to enjoy it because you know next year is never going to be the same again. <laughs> Now,
and enthusiasts have come from all over the globe to see their favourite planes. This couple from the Netherlands. And naturally, they want to look around this giant from the Netherlands Air Force. It's so exciting because we, we just have the chance to get the, the Friends Riot tickets. So we thought, oh, maybe we have the chance to can get somewhere in, in a Dutch plane. So it was really amazing to, to can get that, yes. It is going to be hot this weekend and the organisers are warning people to be prepared. But bring your hat, bring your sunblock, bring proper shade for the children and don't bring your pets with you. 130,000 visitors tomorrow and Sunday will be watching, for the first time in years, the clear blue skies. Ken Goodwin, ITV News, Fairford. Well, now let's take a look at the weather for the weekend. Here's Alex. Hello, it's going to be another good weekend for getting out and about. More sunny and warm conditions on Saturday. A bit breezy out towards the coast, but that may be welcome news for many. As for Sunday, it's going to be mostly fine, but there is the risk of a few showers coming in in the afternoon. Some of them could be on the heavy side, and it's all because of a slight change in conditions which will be developing over the next few days. We're still going to be pulling in the very warm air from the southeast, but from the southwest we'll see this area of low pressure arriving, certainly by Tuesday. It does mean there is a chance of some showers, and because of the amount of heat that that's going to be around. Some of those showers could be on the heavy and thundery side, but that's not the situation out there at the moment. It's a clear, dry night and very uncomfortable sleeping. Lows are settling down at around 17, maybe 18 degrees Celsius, particularly in town and city, so very uncomfortable for sleeping. It does mean a fine start to the weekend, though. More sunshine on offer, the temperature climbing into the 20s by around 10 o'clock, and then in the afternoon we should reach around 27. Not as warm as what it was earlier today, but still very respectable for the time of year. If you are going to be out and about, make sure you do protect yourself with sun cream, try and stay cool and also drink plenty of water. Looking further ahead, as I said, there is a chance of a few showers on Sunday, quite a few and far between. Monday and Tuesday, there is a high risk of showers and staying pretty warm highs of 28. And that's the way it looks tonight. There's plenty more news from our region on the website. I'll be back tomorrow evening at six o'clock. Have a good evening.